Hi, my name's Cupins, and I'm here to tell you that sometimes you need combustion. Look, I just got hit with a hurricane recently. Dang old Hurricane Milton, and my power was out for six days. It was actually terrible, but I managed to keep the Twitch streams going every night because, look, I'm a dang old Twitch streamer. I do a sesh every night at 9 p.m. Eastern. If I lose power and I have terrible signal, I still manage to make it live. I might be a little bit late, but look, I didn't miss a stream, but I didn't have power for several days and it wasn't fun. It wasn't my favorite thing, but I did, I did tap into the power of combustion during my little stint of not having any electricity in my house. And this is something I've done before. If you watch my content, I lost my power a couple of years ago to the hurricane. It was just, uh, I just didn't have power for a few days. We were doing candlelight streams and I just kept it going. But this time they, they predicted it was one of the craziest storms, one of the worst storms. Actually, I got scared. It was one of the first times I ever evacuated because they kept saying that the winds were gonna be more powerful than any other winds. I kept hearing people talk about different levels of categories. Maybe we need to call it a category six. I was hearing a lot of weird stuff about it and uh, I, I was taking it a bit serious. So I ended up not staying in my house, which is a little bit older. You know, the older houses are only rated to withstand winds of certain speeds. And I'm looking at the numbers and I'm like, I, I don't I don't I don't want to blow away just because I want to be a cool Florida man and stay in my spot. But I do think it's interesting because they did warn a lot of the flooding and the, the flash flooding and stuff. They warned uh, my area about it a lot. But we had some recent storms where we didn't get any warnings about it. I think one of them was like Tropical Storm Debbie or something. I had an insane amount of flooding in my area. I saw like fish walking around in the street. Dang all invasive walking catfish. But like the water was up to my ankles in, in my street. And uh, tons of my, my uh, tons of people around me just experienced crazy amounts of flooding. I thought it was, I thought it was really interesting. I, I didn't hear anything about it before then. But when they hype up a storm, like, oh my God. This is going to be so much water. You need a light vest. And there, there was, I didn't have as much water, but look, you, there, those storms are hard to predict. They got to try to say as many things as they can. So if some of the things happen, they like, look, I was right about, you know, seven of the 38 things that I said it was going to, it was going to do. Mm. But it was an interesting storm. I ended up staying with some friends at a newer apartment complex. And I'm thinking to myself, apartments are like giant buildings made out of like metal and cement. <laughs> It's going to do better than a house built in like the 60s or 70s. I, I, I'm hoping, right? And they were staying on the second floor. So I'm like, look, if there's if there's water, if there's flooding, I'm already up the floor. So maybe I'll be good and I can just go up the stairs if it gets worse, right? Because I live on a, on a single story house. I'm not balling like that yet. So I, I stay with some friends of their apartment complex to get hit with a storm. And I got to say, it was it was it was a decent one, like from from what you can hear I've been through many storms. I've lived in Florida most of my life. And out the out the windows, you can just hear, you can just hear the wind, right? You can hear it hitting the windows, going through the trees. It just, it, for me in the area I was at, it just, it sounded so loud. And I was in an apartment building where they had construction not too far away. There was like stacks of two by fours. They're all tied up and stuff. And I'm like, if the wind picks up one of those, I know the, the windows rated for wind, but I don't know if it's rated for two by fours in addition to the wind speeds. So I was, I was like a little bit nervous, but nothing, nothing really happened. I didn't have too much damage. Unfortunately, uh, my mom's house had a bit of damage. Her car was totaled from the last hurricane and then she ended up having like a hole in her roof from, the, from this one. Trees fall over. I saw tons of downed trees and branches. It's, it's one of the worst things. It, it sucks because the wind does a lot, but it, it knocks the trees around and they end up doing a lot of damage. I know a couple of years ago, I had a giant like metal shed get blown by the wind, rolled right by my house and missed it. And I was like, I wonder how much damage that would have done if it hit me directly. <laughs> but right after the storm, I ended up uh, walking my dogs. Obviously, the, I'm not taking them out when the wind's blowing 100 something miles an hour. So we got to wake up super early. First thing, take them out when it's finally clear, the, the calm after the storm is 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 kind of fun. There's a lot of people, oh, I, I've been stuck inside for however long, let me go out and do some stuff. But I go to walk my dogs, I, I have three dogs and it's me and my girl. We go right outside of, the, of this apartment complex where we were staying for the night. <laughs> and right as soon as we get outside, I, I see a license plate and it's like, oh geez, dude, 
the wind blew so hard it knocked somebody's license plate off of their vehicle like i that's not something i would think about right you know like trees fall over but i'm like bro it, you got the license plate the wind blew so hard it took the license plate off of somebody's vehicle it's actually wild <laughs> it's wild to think about so i i get a little bit closer to it and i i, I pick it up and i flip it over and i look at it it was my license plate. It look, it, it was maybe 30 feet from the car, but it was my license plate. I'm like, these numbers look familiar. Like I couldn't tell you my license plate number off the top of my head, but when you're holding it in your hand, you're like, you know, it's your license plate. I'm like, uh, yep, yeah, that's, that's definitely it. Walked over to my vehicle. There was no license plate on it. I did the math really quick. I did the, the quick maths on that vehicle minus license plate plus license plate 30 feet away. They, 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 they went together. They canceled each other out or whatever. So it was interesting. <laughs> it was interesting. That was one of the first things I saw when I got outside. Like, oh, somebody's license plate. Uh, it, uh, okay, it was mine. I'm glad it was only 30 feet from my vehicle, right? Imagine if it just, imagine if it was just 18 counties over. Imagine if it just hit the other coast of Florida. Imagine if the storm just picked it up and, and took it away. Like, where do you... You just go in and be like, hey, I the the storm took my license plate. Can I get can I get another one? I don't know how it works. And I was like an hour away from my house. So I was I was like, I'm glad I found it before we had to drive back, because that would have been a weird one. But good thing nobody else like found it and got weird with it or like <laughs> took it to the office and and uh, was like, hey, somebody uh somebody lost their thing. Cause it it was right by my vehicle, but it it could have been it could have been one of those things where it was where it was really bad. But anyway, I, I make it home. The place where I was staying at, they got power right as I was leaving. We're like, oh, you guys don't have power. We're going to go back home, check on everything. As soon as we pack our vehicle up and start to leave, they get power. And it's like, oh, dang. I ended up not having power for, for like six days or whatever. They kept giving me estimations and they kept moving the date around. They, they, they told me no estimation and they pushed it back and they brought it closer. It, it was not a fun thing to look at because I'm like, it's, it's at least three or four days before I have power. But one thing that I did before I decided to evacuate was I picked up a generator from my house. I never owned one before, but they were predicting that people could lose power for weeks. And uh, I had already lost power recently for a few days. And I was like, I just, I don't want to do it, bro. It's it's hot. I, I like to be able to charge my devices. I like to be able to, to run my air conditioner. So before the, the storm and before I decided to actually evacuate, we picked up a, a generator at Lowe's. I was checking around and I couldn't find anything. They were they were pushing them out the door quick. Like Home Depot didn't have any. And when I get to Lowe's, they had one option and all the employees, they had a few employees just loading them up and then taking them out to people's cars. Like there was, there, people were buying them so quick. I could only see like six or seven of them. They're like, we have uh, several more in the back, but they're going quick. And I, I didn't have any time to do any research. I, I knew that there weren't any other ones in the area and I'm like, Dang, I could be without power for weeks. <laughs> Let me pick up a dang old generator. So I just, I made a, a, a gut decision or uh, I'll call it I FOMO bought a generator. I was like, this is my only option. <laughs> They're going out the door quick. If I don't buy one in 10 minutes, I probably won't be able to buy one is what it looked like. So I scooped one. Uh, it, it was a Furman generator. They told me I couldn't return it after 48 hours or whatever. And I couldn't get back to the store for for 48 hours or whatever, just because of the storm. But um, I had limited time to return. I, I, I basically, it, it, I bought a generator. I looked it up online later. A lot of people are like, that's not a very good one. Uh, it's, it's not the best one, but you know, it, it'll work probably. And I, I learned that really quickly when I put the oil in it. One of the first steps is, you know, plug the battery and connect the oil. And I go to screw this plastic oil cap back into the metal body. I, I, don't, I don't know a ton about uh, oil and gasoline and parts, but I, I got to screw the oil cap back into where I unscrewed it from. And it just like, it doesn't go. And it's got a, a metal body. I'm trying to screw this, this, this cheap quality, terrible plastic into, I ended up cross threading it and like had to wedge the oil cap. And, uh, it, that was the only way I could get it to seal. I ended up calling the customer support for it. And I'm like, uh, the oil cap sucks. Uh, it's plastic and it broke almost instantly. And the person on the phone is like, yeah, we get that a lot. And I'm like, why, why, are, why are they plastic? They're like, don't worry, we can send you a replacement one. And I'm like, it's, it's going to be plastic, right? It's going to be the same one that I broke on, 
on on the first attempt to try and use it i don't look i still don't have the gas cap or the excuse me the oil cap i, I might have said it, it was an oil cap i might have said the wrong word but i don't i don't have the new oil cap i'm actually looking into third party metal magnetic replacement alternative options but look we have the generator we get it fired up i got gasoline there's a bit of a gasoline shortage but i picked up one that does dual fuel it does a uh, propane blue I got propane and propane accessories. My generator is a propane accessory, so there's that. But I, I, we already got a bunch of gasoline just in case. I didn't even realize I was gonna be able to use propane with it at the time. I think I'm gonna test that out the next time that I need to use it. But I was able to get my house powered with the generator, with a combustion engine, right? When I lost my power a couple of years ago, I had some devices to hit, but eventually the few devices that I had ran out of power. And I I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna break out the Bic lighter and hit some classic combustion rips. This year, I didn't have to do that. I have tons more devices than I did a couple of years ago. I never ran out of battery on any of my devices. I just kept ripping I had different flower devices, concentrate devices, I'm going back and forth. But none of the portables that I had were were giving me for flower specifically were giving me like a big old monster rip or or one that was really going to do it. You know, nothing like a hammer or a volcano. I did end up putting two. If you saw my Twitter post, I put two different flower vapes on on one piece and then I hit two at a time. And that kind of got close. But uh, one of the, the nights when I was doing my my Twitch stream. I ended up plugging in my uh, my volcano <laughs> into the generator because I had to do a hurricano rip. You know, I lost my power to the hurricane and I had to bust out the cano and do a hurricano hurricane slash volcano rip. So look, the whole point of the story is to tell you that I used a combustion engine to power my vaporizer. Anyway, come get lit with me on Twitch. I'll see you later.